I started in 1983, fishing with my father on a gill net site. You know, a lot of it's just timing the tides right. I mean, you figure every time you turn the key of the boat, you know, you've got dockage, you've got fuel, you've got ice, you've got time. That's me. Why are you gonna pay top dollar for my fish when you can buy something else and just label it whatever? We have 74 different species of rockfish off the Oregon coast. It's sold as snapper. If people are willing to accept that their fish is mystery fish, then who cares anymore about the small guy? Fish is one of the most highly traded commodities. The average piece of fish changes hands about seven times between the moment of capture and the moment it gets to your plate. Before the mid-90s, the whole basis of fishery management was always, how much can we take? They say, well, we've got to save the oceans, so we'll have to privatize. There's a select few people at the top that are making all the money, and they're making the rules that benefit themselves. If the plan is to have 10 big boats on the West Coast that catch 95% of the seafood, that seems extreme, but it's not out of the question. Security, security, this is the wind dancer departing St. Paul Harbor. This decision the council's facing will really say a lot about what kind of future Alaska small businesses face. We're bickering and arguing over microphones. This is my kid, this is my boat, this is my livelihood. Who suffers the most is that little kid that might not have a chance to go fishing. This is basically the waterfront of Kodiak. Things have really become consolidated. Everybody is living in denial here because of big money. What I'm not in favor of is you can sit back and make money off what somebody else is doing. That's not an improvement on anything. Why don't you just give us the names of the five or seven guys that are going to own this fishery? We're looking at a shift in coastal America like we have never seen. 